Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best ETFs to buy right now. So I am comparing some of the most popular ETFs to each other to determine what ETF deserves our capital and can help us build wealth over the long term. In this video, I'm going to do some of the well-known ETFs. However, in my next video, I will compare the most popular ETFs to one another, such as QQQ, SPY, VOO, VTI, MTUM, and many, many more. So this video is just a warm-up where we're going to be talking about BND, LIT, VUG, VNQ, MJ, SPYG, SLV, VWO, METV, and ICLN. On screen right now, you can see the ETF ticker symbols, which I just went over, their names, which corresponds to those ticker symbols, the space that they operate in, the number of holdings these ETFs or exchange-traded funds actually have, and will diversify you into by buying one of these ETFs. Next to that, I have the expense ratio, and to me, anything above 0.25 is very expensive expensive for an expense ratio, so I highlighted the ones that I think are actually too expensive. Right next to that, we can see the dividend yield, and some of these give a pretty good dividend, while others don't give any dividend at all. And then lastly, we have their five-year return. However, when I compare these ETFs to each other, I am not going to compare their five-year return, and instead I'm going to compare their long-run returns to each other. So I'm looking at data from over a 20-year period. So although, for instance, we can see LIT, which is the Global X Lithium and Battery Tech ETF, which has appreciated 175%, that doesn't necessarily mean that LIT is the best ETF out of these ETFs. It just means that it performed very well in the last five years. However, how does this ETF compare to its long-term gains instead of just its five-year returns? And that's what I really want to focus on, because if you want to build wealth, you don't want quick five-year returns, even if they are exceptional, you want returns for literally the rest of your entire life. You want consistent returns that give you stability and a decent dividend if you can. So with that being said, we are going to compare them in this order. We're going to start off comparing MJ, which is our number one, to our number two, which is METV, and then from there we're just going to go on and on. Also, if you are wondering why VUG and SPYG are highlighted, these are my personal favorites out of these 10 ETFs. And over 60% of my portfolio is just in ETFs. But with that being said, let's determine which is the best ETF out of these ETFs. So let's start by comparing MJ to METV. And to compare these companies, we are going to hypothetically invest $10,000 into each of these at the exact same time, which means they will have an identical start date, and we are also going to have dividends reinvested. So for this arbitrary date that we picked to compare these two ETFs, we actually just picked one year. And in this data, we can see their starting share price, their ending share price, the starting amount of shares, the ending amount of shares, their dividend reinvestments, their total return over the period, their annualized gains, their starting investment, and of course the ending investment. And down below, we also have the years that we are doing this. So for this one, we're actually just going to use a short term because one of these companies actually hasn't been on the stock market very long, not even technically a year yet. And clearly, we can't compare these companies companies before the ETF was listed. So for this particular comparison, we can see that METV in blue has won this ETF battle. Now we can go back to our chart, and since METV won, we can now compare it to our number three spot, which is BND. And that's exactly what we're going to do. However, when we compare it to BND, BND absolutely slaps METV. And this is a bond ETF. This is literally just investing into this bond ETF $10,000 one time back in 1995, and that would have appreciated to over $100,000 in current day. So the clear winner here is going to be BND. Now, who should we compare BND to? Well, now we're going to go to our number four spot, and we're going to compare it to Vanguard's Emerging Market Stock Index Fund, which is VWO. So for VWO, compared to 
to B and D. This is very, very close. However, VWO barely outpaces B and D. And you can see we almost have a 15 year time period that we are looking at, but nonetheless, a win is a win. So VWO is going to be moving on and B and D is now going to be eliminated. However, now that we have a new champion, we are now going to compare VWO to VNQ, which is another Vanguard fund that focuses on real estate. So how is VWO going to compare against another Vanguard fund? Well, not that well because VNQ actually is better than VWO. And from the chart, you can see at one point VWO was better until we see this inflection point right here where they have changed sides and VNQ took the lead. So $10,000 would have appreciated up to $24,000 over the time span from 2007 to 2022, which means that VNQ moves on and VWO is now eliminated. Next, we will compare VNQ to SLV, which is a precious metals silver commodity ETF trust that only follows one holding. So let's see how those compare. Well, unsurprisingly, VNQ will move on again because SLV would only appreciate close to $17,000 while VNQ is over $24,000. So now that VNQ has beaten SLV, it will now move on to try to beat SPYG, which is one of my personal favorites. So let's see how that ends up. So SPYG actually beats VNQ by double its money. So this is basically an S&P 500 growth ETF, and it's one of my personal favorite ETFs, and it clearly beats VNQ. So over give or take a 15 year period, we can see we would have been much better off investing into SPYG than VNQ, which means over the long term to build wealth, this is one of the ETFs that we would want to invest into. However, with that being said, let's see if we can dethrone SPYG by comparing it to ICLN, which is the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF. Because if we compare these two based off of their five-year return, the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF has appreciated by 150%, which is much greater than the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 Growth ETF SPYG, which has only returned around 137%. So if you just look at the short-term five-year graph, you may think that the ICLN ETF is better. However, let's see if that actually holds to scrutiny. Well, surprisingly, it does not. Because if we go all the way back to 2008 and we invested at $10,000 into ICLN and SPYG, we can clearly see that SPYG is so much more lucrative and so much better at building wealth than the iShares Clean Energy ETF. Now, I do want to have a caveat here because we are forced to look at past performance and historical data. However, this does not guarantee future projections, because from this point on, we could see ICLN outperform SPYG for a number of years. However, if we're talking about 20 to 30 years in the future, it's actually going to be safe when we rely on the historical trend of this particular ETF to build wealth over time. We are not trying to jump in and out of these ETFs like we would in some individual stocks, even though I personally like investing into individual stocks and letting it ride for the long term, I literally never sell ETFs or exchange traded funds, especially if it tracks an index or if I invest into a mutual fund because these are meant to build long-term wealth. And at first, it can be very slow to build your wealth. For instance, it would take you around 13.76 years from a $10,000 investment just to accrue $56,000. However, with that being said, if you would have invested a lot more money and continuously dollar cost average into SPYG, oh my gosh, that would have been a crazy growth machine for your overall capital. And that's personally the strategy that I like to use. But let's see if we can dethrone SPYG. Who is their next contender? Well, SPYG's next contender is going to be VUG, which is Vanguard's growth index fund. So let's see which one is better between the Spider portfolio and Vanguard. I do want to point out that they both have very good expense ratios of only 0.04, which is fantastic news. 
However, the Spider portfolio does offer us a better dividend compared to Vanguard's growth index fund, and as you know, we are going to incorporate drip investing into these various projections, so let's see if VUG can dethrone SPYG. And the results are in, and yes, yes it can. Surprisingly, when going back to 2004 and projecting it until current day, we can see that VUG barely beats out SPYG. However, there is a problem here because depending on what year we pick, some years SPYG will outperform VUG, but for this particularly randomly generated date, where the start date is January 30th of 2004, VUG ended up outperforming SPYG, even though both of these ETFs are extremely similar. So now that we have the new champion, let's see if VUG can dethrone LIT, which is actually the best appreciating ETF on this list according to the last five years. In the last five years, it has gained investors 175%. So that would mean that you would experience 35% more growth investing into LIT than VUG. However, this is only focusing on the short term and I really want investors to focus on the long term, especially if they want to build wealth. So let's go to our last comparison to see if VUG can dethrone LIT by being the best performing ETF. And surprisingly, VUG definitely outperforms LIT, especially with our randomly generated date of 2000. 2010 all the way to present. So both ETFs had around 11.67 years to appreciate in price. However, as you can see from the chart, the LIT ETF mainly started to appreciate right here where my mouse is. However, VUG had a very consistent uptrend and recovered from all all of their pullbacks and or corrections or even crashes. And this is why VUG is actually the best ETF, in my personal opinion, out of these 10 ETFs to build wealth over the long term. So all of that to say that VUG and SPYG are phenomenal ETFs that have historically built plenty of wealth over the long term, but the compounding growth effect of these ETFs is only going to really work if you dollar cost average, which means every week Week or every two weeks or even every month, you are investing hundreds of dollars so you can really gain from the compounding interest and the growth from these particular ETFs. Also, I like how both of them are very well diversified by investing into over 200 companies, and this actually saves people from losing money during recessions, market crashes, or even minor pullbacks or corrections in the overall stock market, so these are also extremely safe. ETFs are amazing tools to build wealth with stability and safety over time as long as you dollar cost average into them. And in my next video, I am going to compare the top 10 most popular ETFs, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, so I can tell you what are the best ETFs to buy, which will truly allow you to build wealth over the long term, outperforming 90% of professional stock pickers stock traders, hedge fund managers, analysts, and other investing professionals. So for more videos like this one, remember to go and smash that like button, comment your favorite ETF down below, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.